Well, welcome to Bouge Quick Start Edition. This is something we've been doing monthly, and we're going to take a bit of a summer break, and then we'll see what the fall looks like when we come back. But my name is Michelle Hoyt, and I want to officially welcome you. I am a manager of education and development with Remax Integra, and we're going to cover today, for those of you especially that are new to Remax, we're going to talk all about the Bouge CRM setup, how lead routing works on Remax.com. We're going to go over the mobile search app, and we're going to cover how to build your Bouge website. And we will see how that will go. Uh, let's see, I'm getting a blank screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I was seeing a blank screen on Facebook, so I just want to make sure everyone's good there. Okay, well, like I said, welcome. Before we get started, though, on the, plat the desktop part of the program, there's so much to cover on mobile because that's how you work, isn't it? You work on a regular basis, constantly running around, constantly needing to get to your leads, and you're going to get leads coming in at all times of the day. And it's not going to ever work conveniently with your schedule. So I want to make sure that you are set up from a mobile perspective. Let me go ahead and get this set up for you from a mobile perspective. There's a couple of apps that we're going to take a look at that you're going to download and get yourself set up correctly for the system to get leads. Okay, let's first of all, grab your mobile device. I'm going to get mine up on the screen here. And the first one you're going to find is the Boosh CRM mobile app. So I will show you what that looks like. Now there is a Bouge CRM, by the way, CRM stands for Client Relationship Management System. If you are new to the business, that you're going to hear that term a lot. That means your database. Where do you house your database? And a CRM, Client Relationship Management System, is usually located in a cloud service program, which is good because you want to have it backed up at all times. Uh, let me go ahead and get my phone on the screen here. There's just a slight delay. Hopefully that won't take too long and then we'll be good to go. So like I said, Boosh CRM mobile app. Look on the Google Play Store or the I, on the App Store on your iPhone and you should be in a good place. I uh, might need to just reset something here. Ah, that's the problem. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, and get some of these other programs closed. For those of you with Macs, I'm sure you realize that if you got too many programs running, it's going to slow things down. So let's try this again. There we go. Close some of this. That's what's happening. Okay. So I'm going to pull up my phone on the screen. Like I said, hopefully by now you found your Boosh CRM mobile app. And we're going to talk through a little bit of what that looks like and what that's all about. And if I could get my phone to cooperate. <laughs> Have to love this live. There we go. We're in business. All right, that's what I want to see right there. Okay, so the Boosh CRM mobile app, let's take a quick peek at that for a second. Like I said, you're going to be on the go and you're going to need to access your leads and you're going to be getting notifications. The Boosh CRM mobile app is this one right here. If you can see what I'm doing with my cursor, it is a navy blue app with a white teardrop on top of it. So it says Boosh CRM. Now, what resides inside of the Boosh CRM mobile app? Now, first of all, it's going to ask you to log in, which is going to be your Mac Center credentials. And of course, it just kicked me out. <laughs> Should have known. Haven't been in here for a week or so, so I'm not surprised. Now, one of the things you can do, I don't think I have this one filled in, you can set up your device to remember passwords. For some reason, I don't think I did it on this one. And I won't take up your valuable time to figure that out. And you can always hit remember me too. So oop, I didn't even get a chance to save the password. Did you see how fast that was? Okay. <laughs> what happens is when you get leads sent to you, you're gonna get a text notification. You're going to get an email notification. And when you go to accept it, especially from your mobile device, it will automatically default to the Boosh CRM mobile app or ask you to download it if you haven't already. 
When you open up the app, it will default view to the inbox like you see here. This is your communications inbox. This is going to have emails, forms, text messages that are coming from clients. Now, the forms themselves are those little boxes on Remax.com or any of the Bouge websites that a consumer will type something in. They'll ask a question, they'll ask for a showing, or just ask for more information. So you will see a list of those located here on all clients, not just the brand new ones. So any activities that have gone on in your account will be listed here. Sorry, mine's a little boring. I don't have anything going on in my demo account. But needless to say, you will have those here. Now, if there's a particular person that you want to look more into, let's say that it's from, a, you've got a message from a particular contact. So we're gonna go right here, or we're gonna click contact, contacts, I should say. And let's just look up someone. Let's say you know the person's name right away, obviously. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this one up. Okay, so here is the, the contact right here. Now, any details, whether you put them on desktop or on the mobile app, will obviously sync up and they'll be in real time on both sides. You can go in here as you learn more about a client and you can hit the edit button and add more information as you get to know them. Across the top here, and obviously you see information, you see phone numbers and you see email and you have the ability to text or email or call this person directly from the Bougie CRM mobile app. Now, why would you need to do that instead of just calling from your phone or texting from your phone in itself? What this is going to do is going to record your interactions with this client. And that's super important because it's going to assign a lead score. So the more you're interacting with someone, the, the higher the score, this person's going to be prioritized in your database. It's going to help keep you on track. Also, having those notes like text messages and things in the system already will save you the time and trouble of copying and pasting later on. And I know you get a flurry of text messages back and forth with your clients. So this, could, this is going to be a new habit for you, but try it and you'll see that it's going to help save you a lot of time and also keep you organized. Now, also at the top here are these tabs. Let's say that this is the name of the client that had just messaged you. To get to that message, what you do is you click right here where it says communications. This opens up an inbox just for this client. Now, see how this says new contact form? That was back in February, but you can actually see what they wrote in the box by simply opening it up. Now, mine's already been opened up, so it's pretty much static right now, but your new one will be in blue. It'll be sort of like a new message that's been unread and you click and open it. It'll tell you exactly what they're looking for. This is really important before immediately responding to your client, obviously, because you wanna be able to make sure you're answering their questions specifically and they want them to know you're paying attention and you have the tools to do so, okay? So that's kind of what you do to get to an individual. Now let's go back a little bit, hit the back arrow, but I want you to see this menu that's right here. It looks like a hamburger, so hamburger menu. This menu is super important, okay? You're going to, first of all, notifications. Notifications will be virtually anything going on in your account that has some type of a message attached to it, notification, reminder, or simply those type of things. If you've got tasks set up, which is getting way more advanced into the system where you have to-dos and things like that happening, those will show up here too. And obviously you need to be on top of those and you'll see what's due and what's overdue. We're going to hit the back arrow. Once again, we're going to go to the hamburger menu. Now offer leads. If any of you open this up and you see a red number beside zero, then you better jump in here and accept whatever leads have been offered to you. We're going to talk in a minute about the timing of all that and how that works. Okay, now branded mobile app. This is really fun. This is a very cool thing that you can do to share with your buyers and even your sellers too, for them to have a personally branded mobile app of yours. That's the Remax search app. So it's basically the Remax app, the consumer app. And what they're gonna be able to do is they're going to be able to open that app up and all their activity that they do will come directly to you. It's going to be branded to you specifically, okay? All right, let me go ahead and get this set up for you and we'll be in a good place. Okay, now here's what we do. We're gonna click on branded mobile app. See this link right here, I want you to click it. It says copy. It's going to give you an option to copy this link and send it directly to anyone, anywhere. You can text, email, share it on social directly, whatever you want to do. 
This is super easy and watch what happens. Let's say I'm gonna text it to someone. I'm gonna click on the texting icon. Now I'm using an iPhone obviously, but see what it says, begin your home search by downloading and it'll say your name, okay? Test agent in my case, it'll say your name's branded mobile app. This link that you're seeing here is unique to you and only you, okay? When the person on the other end, oh, sorry, my phone just went off the screen. When the person on the other end actually receives it, it's going to prompt them. When they click on that link, it's going to prompt them to download the Remax search app. And then it's going to automatically open up with your information. And I'm just getting my phone back up on the screen here. We'll be, there we go. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. All right, so once again, this link, you can copy and paste it, store it on your notes on your phone, so then you can text it to anyone at any time or put it on social anywhere at any time. This is unique to you. Now, what does this look like on the other end? Let's take a look. Let's do this. Let's go to the Remax search app. Now, if you've not downloaded this because you're new to Remax and you think you don't need it, there's another way to share your mobile app from here. I'm circling up here at the top. Hopefully you can see this, but it's a white app with a red, white, and blue balloon. This is the current version of the Remax consumer search app. When a consumer has it branded specifically to an agent, first of all, uh, go ahead and download it yourself if you'd like to. Well, accept the terms just like a consumer, allow it to use your location, just like it's doing for me right now. Now up here in the top is a menu. When it is branded to one particular agent, broker, anyone in the Remax system, it will actually show that person right here at the very top. So this is my person, anything I do on the mobile app, whether it's ask for a showing, ask a question, ask more information, or just favorite a property, all those notifications go directly to this agent. This is my preferred buyer's agent or PBA for short. So I am using the Remax search app, but it's branded specifically with one particular agent. This is the power of the technology that we have here at Remax. And this is something that you can do to control, hopefully control where your buyers are looking for properties. More importantly, the type of information that they need. You will get all inquiries. It doesn't matter whose listing it is, whether it's a non-REMAX listing or, or a REMAX listing or someone else's REMAX listing, you have become their preferred buyer's agent. So hopefully that's clear. And you can watch the steps again if you when you get the recording and watch this back. But again, this is their mobile search app, all right? Uh, just so you know, those of you on Zoom, please feel free to ask questions as we go through this. You're gonna get a lot of information today at a very rapid pace, but I promise you, you're gonna pick up a lot. Okay, so that's the mobile search app and how that works. So let's go ahead and we're gonna close that out. So you know about the Boosier mobile app and you know about that. One more thing I wanna share with you from a mobile perspective. There will be times when you need to get into more details into the client record. Maybe you wanna see history, maybe you wanna see more information about them or get to your deals or your listings or something like that. There is a Mac Center Go app. However, it's mostly to provide information updates and new things in the network. It's amazing. But if you wanna to get to your full desktop apps on Mac Center, you will need to set up what's called a mobile shortcut. It is not an app, but it looks like it. So see in my fourth row here, excuse me, my sixth row of apps here, it says Mac Center, which is a red and blue X. It looks like an app, doesn't it? It's actually a shortcut. So when I open this up, it's going to now ask me, and this is where I've actually set it up to remember my password. It's gonna open up Remax Mac Center. And look at this, it looks just like desktop, but it's mobile responsive. It, we're actually on the full website. Now, what I need to do, so first of all, I can go into the Boosh system, I can go into Remax University, Design Center, anything I want right here on my phone. What I want to do, though, is to save this, okay? And I've already saved it as a shortcut. So what I need to do is, I can do a number of things. I can go to the home page, but at the bottom, sorry, let me do this. Since I've already done this, here's what we're going to do to set this up. Since I've already done it, I've got to start over to show you. I'm gonna to go to Safari on my iPhone. So do not go to any other browser app on your phone. Go to Safari, it's the native browser. On your Androids, please go to Chrome because that is your native browser. So down here on Safari, we're gonna open this up 
and we're going to type in remax.net just like we went on desktop to get into Mac Center. So remax.net, not .com. Now I've already got this set up to remember my password, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna log in. So you're going to log in just like you would before. Now take your time typing it out because I know it's a long password. Hopefully you have it saved and you can copy and paste. Once you've logged into the system, right here, there's an option to save it as a mobile shortcut. So there's a little square with an arrow. Now, Android, you're gonna have three little dots in the top right corner. You're gonna click that. It will give you a drop down menu and you're gonna click add to home screen. I'm sorry, I wish I had one to show. But right here on iPhone, the square with the arrow will give you options. You're gonna move this up until you find where it says add to home screen. So see where it says add to home screen. We're gonna add that. And then we're gonna click add. So yay for us. And I've done this a few times, obviously. But right here, it drops it to the end of your apps. It looks like an app, but it's a mobile shortcut, just like you've set up on desktop. So very, very cool, right? This is going to enable you, once again, to get to all of your Remax tools immediately, quickly, and on the spot, no matter where you are. And if you're not paying for unlimited data or you don't have a mobile hotspot, a lot of the plans include that now. That's highly recommended. So you can be pretty much ready to go all the time. So let me know if there's any questions on that. I'm going to keep moving through. That concludes the mobile part of our program and you'll be good to go. A really quick tip for iPhone users though. If you want your iPhone to remember your passwords, and this is true of any website, you're going to go right here to settings. And on Android, I'm sorry, there's probably lots of YouTube videos on how to do it there. It should be pretty similar. You're going to go down here. And this is an iPhone 12 and I'm using with the latest iOS. So if yours looks a little bit different, then you're, you should be able to still find it. Or it might look in a, be in a different place. But passwords, OK? Passwords with that little key. Now, when you get in here, now it's going to say autofill passwords. We're going to allow that by making sure this toggle is turned to the right. Then we're going to make sure that we're allowing filling from an iCloud keychain. Now, this is an Apple term, the keychain, but that's what you want to have checked off. You could also do Chrome if you're using an iPhone, but it's best to use the native browser and native tools in the Apple devices. Okay. So then moving forward, whenever you do things on Safari, it's going to help you by remembering those passwords for you. So there you go, my little tech tip for the day. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to the desktop program. Again, let me know if there's any questions. I'm going to just quickly take a peek at Facebook and make sure we're doing okay. I think we are. And let me just double check. I think we're in good shape. Okay. We are. Uh, at least it looks like we're still live on Facebook. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on. So we just covered the mobile part. You're ready to go. You're ready to get leads. And the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to be in Mac Center. So remax.net. And then your homepage might look slightly different than mine, but you could go to the homepage or maybe it defaults to the homepage. And then if not, what it's going to do is uh, you can click there to go there as well. So this is going to have the latest and greatest announcements, what's new that's going on in the world of Remax. Now we're going to click right here where it says apps. Now yours, if your Bouge app is not showing, that's okay. You want to click on apps and then click on all. Now, I highly recommend you favorite the Bouge app. This is where all of the Remax.com and Bouge office agent and team website leads go directly into. So you will need to access those. And then we'll talk a little bit more about websites as we go through this. So you're going to click on that. And then it's going to take you into. Now, if you click on this and it takes you into a setup wizard, because this is the first time you've logged into the Bouge system. Go ahead and, and hit continue and accept all the terms and just fast forward through that. I'm gonna show you how to get to the settings here in just a second, okay? So again, if you get a setup wizard, follow the steps, power through, you'll be good in a good place. 
Now, the dashboard here is really primarily for your preferences on what you want to see when you open up your dashboard on desktop or again on mobile because you set up the mobile shortcut. And this can be just the most recent activity. So like recent interactions, my contacts and leads, you'll see a box that says add widgets, make a note to go back and set that up to your liking. So we're going to just skip over that today because it's not relevant to the important stuff right now, which is getting you set up to accept leads. Let's take a quick peek. So again, power through the setup wizard, go to the top right corner here. It's a circle, it should have your photo in it. And we're gonna click on settings. What we're gonna do in settings next is hit settings pages menu. So see how it's a menu, there's a little hamburger. We wanna get into this menu. Then we're gonna click where it says contacts and leads. The first thing we're gonna do is click on notifications. Notifications are going to be how you're going to be alerted by the system whenever there's lead activity, new leads, favorite properties, things like that. Let's take a quick peek at this. I highly recommend you have every box checked off that is possible. The reason these are grayed out where it says web is the desktop. You'll, you will always get notifications on the desktop version no matter what, you can't turn those off because the system wants you to see something that's going on. The only thing you'll get by text message are brand new leads that are offered to you or assigned to you. So new leads as they're coming in, those, those will come by text messages. You will get some lead notifications that are just email only. And that's, it doesn't say you have to accept or decline. Those are people that you're already working with. You're the preferred buyer's agent. So there's a lot of different scenarios. But let's talk through some of this. So a contact or lead is referred or transferred to you. What's nice about this is in the entire Boosh system, if, especially if you're sending a referral to someone in some other state, doesn't even have to be in your own office, it doesn't have to be in your own state, you can actually go into the Boosh system, take that contact, and you can share it with any Remax agent in the entire US. So it's very cool. And what you're going to do is you're going to keep a record of it, and they are going to have a record of it too. So that makes it good. When someone refers or transfers, meaning all together out of their database into yours, you will get a notification that that's been done. In this case, it'll come through the app notification, email, um, so you will be notified right away. Chances are that person's gonna call and give you a heads up. Remember I mentioned the preferred buyer's agent. If someone chooses you as the preferred buyer's agent or is using your mobile search app, you are automatically their PBA. If they update that, so they can, they can remove you as their agent and choose to work with another Remax agent, you will be notified. Now you will not, they will not be removed from your database, they'll still be in there. And I would be careful with this information. If you ever get a notification that says that, then it's probably time to check in with them to see how they're doing. Somehow you miss something, or as they say, drop the ball. But whatever happened is that don't reference this notification. I would just maybe check in with them and say, hey, how are things going? <laughs> or wanted to check in and see how things are going. And you could probably find out a little bit more about what happened. You know, maybe they find out there's a Remax agent that's a family member, who knows? But there's all kinds of scenarios. Um, other things that can happen are if you export import contacts, if someone deletes their account, so if someone actually signs up for Remax.com account where they have a username and a password and they can log in and they can save favorites and save searches and all of that, they can delete their account. They have that right to. You will be notified but they will not be removed from your database, okay? So I just wanna make that clear. Um, again, another opportunity to just check in with them because it's easy sometimes when you get super busy to lose track of certain people. Okay, so those are the notifications, turn them all on. Let's talk about tags for a brief moment. A true database program should have categories, all right? So categories are gonna be labels or basically who is this person to me or what buckets do they fall into? Are they a buyer? Are they seller? Um, what, are you, what are you thinking? You know, this would be a good opportunity to talk to, if you're new to the business, talk to your broker owner about some of the categories or just sit down and sort of inventory your own database, whether you're new or not to the business and just find out, okay, the, this group of people is my golf club. This group of people is my book club. Who are these people to me? Or this is my hairstylist or this is my dentist, whoever they are. Um, you can start to add custom tags right here in the system. The system has already set up and assigned to you these gray no items right here, okay? So see, it's right here. It's in gray. It's all right here, and the system is assigned those. You cannot delete those. You can't change those, and they stay in that color. 
when you want to add your own tag and once you add it in here it's in here forever can be used anytime new contacts come in you can assign it a color so see i've got some others added in here like chamber of commerce and charity event and halloween and golf outings and things like that let's add one so we're just going to pick one let me see if i can think of one i haven't used already <laughs> uh, open house is usually in here too let's see this would be my um how about my high school reunion Woo! all right so we're gonna have a high school reunion group and there we go and i'm going to choose a color and if you don't have all your high school classmates you still should you should get them in here right away even if they're from um, out of the area now but you know what you can always refer them and get get an opportunity out of that so i just added that and there's my high school reunion group it's in magenta now i can start going and adding contacts tag them with that particular group so that i can search later by groups and by tags and categories it's awesome if you've ever used a crm before if you're coming from another brand and you're new to us this is very similar to categories or any other type of tagging that you might see in other CRMs. Okay, custom fields. This is super cool. So this is a way, so your CRM is only gonna be as good as the information you put into it. But more importantly, what do you wanna know about your people? Of course, you should have address and phone number and significant others' names and kids' names and pets' names and all of that and work anniversaries and wedding anniversaries, all of that. Very important, very basic stuff, very common. But what else do you want to know about them? You can actually choose up to 12 different custom fields, which will really help you provide top level customer service. You know, for instance, OK, not only do you get a pet name, but do you know the pet's birthday? <laughs> and then there's timing. So let's let's look at some examples on how to do some of these. These are really important. I'm going to show you how I did the timing, meaning when are they likely to transact or sell or list zero to 30 days, 60 to 90, what are they looking at? So I'm going to go add a custom field and let's just go timing. And this is actually going to be a drop down select. So I'm now going to start adding, we're going to say zero to 30 days. These are my hot, hot prospects. So we're going to go add option. The next one is 30 to 60 days. Okay. Add the next option. We're going to go 60 to 90. And then we're gonna to go to 90 days plus, or we could even say 90 to 120, so up to six months. And if you wanna add another one, you can. When I hit save, so when I, this will now be a category on every single contact record in my database, I can go in and I can choose their timing and then that's all searchable down the road. So for prospecting and farming your own database, so to speak, you can actually start searching by their timing so that you wanna make sure you are staying in front of them and they don't end up running off with someone else in, in the business and with another realtor. So very important. Favorite restaurant, why not have a favorite restaurant and find out or favorite food? right now things are really tough and you're working with buyers who keep losing out in multiple offer situations and they're going to get frustrated so why not make them feel better just uh, give them a 25 dollars gift card to their favorite pizza place in the area hey why don't you take the night off from thinking about homes pizzas on me enjoy or you know get a movie tickets now that the movie theaters are back open whatever it is give them that top level memorable experience so that they will remember it they'll tell all their friends and they'll keep referring you but this is a great opportunity for you to use the custom fields for that purpose um, other things let's talk about offered leads this is probably one of the most important places for you to set up zip codes where are your leads going to come from and how will they know to find you in what area you can choose up to 10 zip codes of which to get Remax leads from either non Remax listings, or if the original listing agent Remax misses their lead in that first hour, it's going to get reoffered and you'll be eligible if your zip codes that you've set up match the property of that particular inquiry. Okay. So again, you will get leads from both non Remax listings, you'll get leads from listings by your other Remax agents. If you miss it, we're going to talk about that in a second. Do not miss those very, very important. And also if someone just does a general account registration, let's say that someone's in your area, they sign up and create a re, my, re, my account on remax.com or your website or the office website. And they, based on where they're located, you will get a lead notification, okay? 
And they may not have even saved a search, but that's how it works. This next section is how, what type of leads do you want to receive? If you're new to the business, do not limit yourself. Just keep them all checked off. Even if you know nothing about farm, you know nothing about multifamily or rentals, there's, go to your broker owner. They know all about these things. They can help you if you get a referral out of it. Keep that income stream flowing in addition to your own business, okay? And then, so really pay attention to some of these settings. So just check everything off and you know, go that route. And remember rentals will be buyers at some point. So don't rule those out too. Right now, a ton of people are trying to rent because they're missing out on homes and they, they need a place to live and they're just gonna maybe wait out the real estate market. So they are able to buy, it just may not be till next year. Text message notifications. Make sure your cell phone number is filled out here, okay? Very important because this is how you're gonna get lead notifications. And there's no save button. Once you put it in, it's there. You don't have to put dashes or anything like that, okay? All right, let me see if there's any questions. I don't see any. Thanks for staying with me. And we're gonna keep rolling. All right, so we just got all of that set up. Let's talk now. I'm gonna take a quick pause and we're gonna talk about lead routing and how that works, okay? Lead routing, how does that work? We are going to talk about Remax.com specifically. And the way that's gonna work is when a lead comes in from remax.com, I'm just gonna leave it in this view right now because we're gonna jump right back into the program. But a lead comes in from remax.com. And what is going to, what's going to happen is, it's going to look then first to see if there's a preferred buyer's agent, okay? If you are a preferred buyer's agent, they can choose to work with you on either desktop or using your mobile search app. All lead activity, everything is routed directly to you as the preferred buyer's agent, okay? Hopefully that's clear. Now let's talk about, and that's anything. It overrides everything. Remax.com lead comes in and is a listing lead of a Remax agent. It is that first person's first time to Remax.com or they're not working with anyone specifically. That listing lead will go directly to the Remax listing agent. They become the assigned agent. They accept it and they're ready to go. Here's another option. The lead will go to a non-REMAX listing, or excuse me, from a non-REMAX listing. This is any of our competitors because we have full IDX on REMAX.com. All active listings can be found. A lead inquiry comes in. It's going to go to whoever's turn it is to get a lead in the zip code that matches that property, okay? Then it becomes the assigned agent. Under general account registration, this is the example I talked about before. Someone just creates my account on remax.com. They have a username and they have a password and they are in that area. So it's going to come to you. There are lead routing rules between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. And this is for your local time zone. So whether you are on Pacific, Mountain, Central, Eastern, which I believe that covers our whole country, <laughs> those four time zones, it's going to be eight to 10. So that one hour acceptance or exclusivity is during those hours. If you get a lead outside of 10 o'clock PM, you technically have until the next morning at 7, 50, basically 8 AM, the clock strikes 8 AM, it's gonna get reoffered. So you have all night and all early morning to accept it. If you miss the lead in that first hour during those business hours, it will get reoffered to one agent at a time every 15 minutes until it gets accepted. Something very important to remember. This is what happens. And this is where if you get a lead on another Remax agent's listing, I'm sorry if that happens because that means that original listing agent wasn't able to get to it. But we give you one hour. If you ask anyone, if they ask for information on something on the internet and they have to wait more than an hour, are they going to move on? Or are they going to wait around? People are very impatient. They're also not very loyal because they want what they want right now. So this is why it is designed. This is why I showed you how to be able to accept leads right away on mobile. Even if you're too busy, still accept it or refer it to someone in your office that maybe isn't so busy or just getting started and work something out from a referral perspective. But keep that business in the office. It's not guaranteed to stay in your office. If you miss the lead, it'll go to another Remax office. Now, how does this work? How this works is if the lead is declined or missed, as I mentioned, it is re-offered every 15 minutes. There is a round robin process. 
So it will look for to identify the agent that has gone the longest without, without receiving a lead and that has signed up for that same zip code that you did. They will get a lead and then they have to wait their turn until everybody else gets a lead in their own zip code. So if you feel like you might be going longer periods of time between leads, keep in mind Remax.com leads are just one piece of your lead generation pie. And you just have to beware that you're going to wait your turn in a more popular zip code, there's gonna be more agents signed up for it. So hopefully that makes sense. But this process will continue through every 15 minutes. Okay, let me know if there's any questions on that. And we are good. Okay, hold on just a second. I think I'm getting a question. I'm trying to see what's going on on Facebook. I might have gotten disconnected on Facebook. I don't see us live right now. Let me just double check. Okay, we'll keep moving. Those of you that are on Zoom, I know you deserve this time and you're going to get it. I think there were some issues with it. Okay, any questions, just let me know. A couple more things to talk about. To be eligible for leads, you must have your zip, at least one zip code filled out to get leads from. And you can't miss three leads in a row, so be mindful of that. You will get leads via the CRM mobile app, email web, which is the desktop, and then text messages. What leads will go into Booge automatically? If you, for your, from your very own agent website, your Booge website, which we're going to show you how to set up, the search app, which is the consumer search app, remember we talked about that, it's branded to you specifically, those lead notifications will be coming in. And then it will also come from team websites if you're part of a team and office websites. Check with your broker owner and ask them what the lead routing rules are for the office Bouge website because they can set those individually. They know your market better. They know how they want the lead routing to work and uh, it's all good. Okay. Uh, let's go to, so yeah, so the multi-office websites and all of that too. Okay, that should cover it. And like I said, let me know if there's any questions. And we should be good. Okay. All right, so we talked about setting up your CRM. Let's take a look at the contacts and leads and how to get contacts in there. If you're just getting started with Bouge, you need to make sure that you have all of your contacts streamlined into your Bouge account. This can be done, done a number of different ways. So let's talk right here. Let's go up here to the top where it says add or import. So we clicked on contacts and leads at the very top. You have these tabs, and then you're gonna click on where it says add or import. We're going to click add individual. Now, this is where you can add one person at a time. And when you add one person at a time, you, it will ask you, first of all, contact or a lead. A lead is going to be someone that you just met. You don't know if they're qualified. You don't know what their timing is. You don't know much about them. So they're, they are just a lead at this point. Not that that's a bad thing. <laughs> Sounds bad. It's not just a lead, but they're a lead. Contact. When you want to add a contact, this is someone that you're already working with. So let's say you got a referral from one of your clients or family or friends. You're already working with them. You're actively sending them properties. You're helping them find something. This person is going to be a contact. And is there a right or wrong answer here? No. I mean, is this going to affect how your CRM operates if you don't change it from lead to contact? No, but this is your personal preference. Something else I'm going to show you is you can actually sync up your Boosh CRM account with either Gmail contacts or Google contacts or your Outlook contacts. And when you do, it's a two-way sync. As you can see, when you're entering this, these names in here for the first time, you're going to be able to sync it over to, the, to either Outlook or to Google. It's up to you. However, on the other side, when you sync it, um, it will come over to Bouge automatically. So it's gonna, really gonna save you a lot of time and manual input. Enter that information and you're good to go. So again, these are just uh, one-offs. These are your referrals. These are when someone calls on one of your signs. These could even be open house leads, just to give you a general idea. So let's click here. Okay. Now I've already got some contacts in here. How else can you get contacts in here? We can import lists. If you're coming from another brand, 
or just recently came from another brand, or even in the last year you have, and you still have contacts somewhere else outside of the Remax system, you can actually sign into one of your accounts and you can bring those contacts over. All right. So let's say it's Realty Juggler, very popular referral makers, the Brian Buffini system. All you have to do is hit next. It will ask you to log into the account and then it will bring those contacts over. Here's another option. You can also export your contacts. Let's say you don't want to sync them up, but you can export your contacts from any other database program, including Gmail, including Yahoo, including any of those platforms, LinkedIn, your iPhone, and you can put them in a CSV or comma separated value file. And you're going to click right here where it says select a CSV file to upload. It will then import all of those contacts. So let me see if I can find a very, very simple list. I may not be able to right now, but it'll let me. All right, let's try this one. Okay, so this one's gonna be a simple list. It's just gonna have names, emails, and I believe that's all I've got on here. What it's going to do is going to ask me to confirm what column headers I want to have in here. So if you import one that has home address and additional information about the client, then it will have all of those in here. We'll ask you to go through and confirm you want those same column headers. Now, by default, it's going to be tagged with today's date. So then if you go back to search, contacts entered on this date, you'll at least be able to find them that way. You also can add another tag, like if you want to add a mass tag, or remember, like I was talking about my high school reunion, let's say I just got the list from someone. I'm on the committee, and I'm doing my high school reunion. So we're going to type in high school. There it is, high school reunion group. So now when I import all of these, and let's, there's maybe a whole bunch of them, they're all going to come in with that tag automatically. It really saves a lot of time. When you go to hit import, it's going to ask you to confirm all this information. If you see it as something that doesn't look right, you're going to hit cancel and go back and maybe you have to make some adjustments. But this is going to say it's going to include three column headers. There's 2,200 contacts. And wow, that's a big high school reunion group. <laughs> if that's what you're doing, I'm just going to hit cancel. I'm not going to do that. But you follow the steps and go through it. Hopefully that helps. And it's just another way. Let's talk about how to sync up your Gmail or your Outlook contacts. Now I'm not going to go, you can go here and click sync contacts, but I've already got it done, but I want to show you how to start from the beginning. You can also go to settings and then you can click right here where it says settings pages. So settings, settings pages, which is the menu. And then you want to click on system. This is an important place. Let's go all the way to the bottom. And this is where you can sync up your Gmail contacts or your Outlook contacts. You can't do both, but you can sync up either one. And anytime you wanna make sure that it's updated, like right now I've got it connected. If I hit sync contacts, that means anybody new that I added to Gmail that may not have come over, you know, this is just going to bring everyone over that was new since my last import. While we're on this page, let's talk about more integrations. Transaction management, you can actually manage your deal pipeline here inside of the Bruce system. What does that mean? That means you can actually set up a tracking system to keep track of your buy and list side deals, including your gross commissions that you can also keep track of. You can utilize the help of the paperless platform that you're using within your brokerage. So whether it's DocuSign.loop or ZipForms, then you can actually use and sync up. And what you're doing is you're connecting your account to your Bouge account. So when you set up a deal, which we won't have time to get into today, um, there's plenty of videos on Remax University, by the way. You can actually set this up. And then what'll happen is it'll sync over client information and help you with that. Using the Bouge deals in the system here. So if you just click on deals, you'll see I've already got a few set up that are pending, closed. This is what it ends up looking like. This does not replace the paperless platform. You're still going to do all your legal documents, signatures, and everything inside of those platforms, but this is merely going to be a pipeline for you to keep track of. This data is exportable, which is good for you, good for your accountant, but it's just a good way to, like I said, really have an end-to-end -end system. Leads come in all the way to the end to the closing table, so it's awesome. Okay. So that's it on contacts and leads. You know, like I said, so you're going to import a list. You're going to add them one at a time or sync up Gmail or those. Um, I apologize. One more thing under settings. I skipped right over it. Um, other integration, integrations are the BombBomb system. So I have my BombBomb account, which is video email. If you're new to the business, you will hear all about BombBomb. It's how to send and stay connected to people with video messaging. 
and you can connect it to here. So that way you can pull in your videos from your bomb bomb library into email messages you sent out of Bouge. Completely optional, you don't have to do that. You can actually also connect other lead generation platforms to your Bouge account. So again, it's automatic that those leads come into the system. Homespotterrealtor.com and Zillow are the perfect examples of what you can do. Follow the steps when you click right here where it says available to connect your account to Bouge. Even if you're not paying for leads on these platforms, um, think about connecting that because someone can find your profile and they can click on contact this agent. Now, there are ways to do that, but it's up to you if you wanna do that. All right, we talked about database contacts and leads. Like I said, tons of videos on Remax University on how to search your database, how to manage it, how to do some lots of fun things with it. Let's talk about campaigns because database is so very important, especially keeping in touch with them. And especially if these are people that are really close to you already, this is what you need to be focusing on. So there is something called drip campaigns. And this is where it's going to be a series of emails that are going out constantly that are touching your database or touching certain groups or categories. You can even set up you know, maybe it is your high school reunion group and you want to set up some specific messages to go out to them. But with your agenda being hopefully to get some business off of it, certainly you can do that. You can also set up campaigns based on the newsletters, but let's take a quick peek at the content templates. The content templates, these are gonna be marketing pieces that the marketing team at the Remax World Headquarters has provided all of you to utilize as you need to. Every single month, towards the end of the month, there's a new newsletter that will be dropped in. So I'm expecting any moment now to see a July newsletter that will be added here to the library. And if you wanna see what it looks like, they do all the content, the pictures, the spell check and everything else, and the headlines are there. If you're too busy and don't wanna go in and edit it or create your own or add your own pictures, cause you can do all of that, everything's editable, then leave it as it is. And then you can send it out like that save you lots of time. Some months you might have time to do it or you have something special planned, but this might be the opportunity to just utilize the content that's there. And this is only showing five of them. See how it says 166? But if I wanna see a lot more templates, there's even a template for asking for reviews. There's templates for holidays, for birthday messages, for home anniversary. They are all going to be there. And it, sometimes it takes a minute to load here. This is one page that tends to just need a minute to refresh. But if you wanna get a head start of it, see how it says page one through seven, but it's gonna start adding these in. These will include all the drip email campaigns, which are pre-planned and pre-set and pre-written emails that go out in increments of time. Uh, those are all loaded in here. And then like I said, like here's the one, let's just scroll down. Okay, I still have seven pages here to go through. <laughs> I encourage you to take some time to look through a lot of these. Like I said, there's holidays, there's other, lots of other information in here. I'm pushing it too fast. Let's go over here to where it's done. Now, how do you set up a campaign? Let's, we're gonna click right here where it says drip. Now you may be asked to import a series of drip campaigns. It may say, go ahead and hit import. Go ahead and hit that button. If you're looking at that right now, it's gonna drop in actually some individual lines right here. And I've, I've done some testing on some other things here too, but existing renters. So if you wanna, if you are prospecting to renters that maybe have a little bit longer lease and can't buy right now, then that's okay. But let's say that's the one. We're gonna open that up and it's gonna show you, it happens to have five emails that are preset, pre-written. If you wanna see the emails and edit them and what they look like, you click on the tab that says emails. Then you can get into where it says edit design. And it's gonna open up this little section here and it's already a pre-written email. Maybe it's not your wording and you just wanna hit edit right here, the little pencil, and then you can start typing in what you what you prefer it to say. We're just gonna say save changes. You can add more blocks to this. Let's say you wanna add a photo. So we're gonna go add block and it's gonna give me an option to add an image. And that's something you can do as well. When you click to choose an image, there's over 400, you can actually do your own. There's over 400 images that are in the library inside of Bouge that you have permission to use. And you can even search by category. Let's say I just want this to be, maybe I want a photo of a kitchen. 
And this is going to pull up all the photos that are tagged with the word kitchen. So I'm just going to click this one, take a quick peek at it, and it's going to give you sizes because you can upload your own too. And we're going to hit insert. Now I don't know what that's going to look like yet, but we'll see. Oh, there. So I dropped it to the bottom. So I'll show you in a minute how you can move that up. Now you can also, so we could just say something like um, summer home ownership. All right, now you can link the image, that's entirely optional, but I'm just gonna leave it like that and then I'm gonna go back. Now, how do we get, I did save edits, yeah. So we're gonna go back, gonna continue. All right, so now once you add something, I can move this up. Let's say I want this way above the text and I put it at the top and it's going to show me what it looks like. So there's my image and I'm in good shape. So yay for me. <laughs> and then you hit save and continue. That's very similar by the way to the websites, which you'll see in a minute. Now I've changed that, it looks how it looks and I saved it and it's ready. However, there's other things like timing. This one goes out immediately after you assign a campaign to someone. This one goes out five days later. Maybe I want that to be seven instead. And I'm gonna go save. And obviously you can choose the time of day and everything else. You can also add more steps to it. Let's say this person has a year lease and you wanna at least be in touch with them once a month. You can continue to add emails. So there's only five emails, so you add seven more. And obviously the last probably five or six are gonna be messages more, the line, more along the lines of there's things you need to do to get ready to buy a home. Now's the time to start looking, contact me, you know, those kind of messages. You can start adding those emails. You can also schedule these type of things in advance. If you just wanna send out a newsletter, let's go back. We're just gonna hit campaigns. And what you wanna do is you just hit single and up here at the top, you wanna to hit add campaign and we're just gonna call this June newsletter. And this is going to be just a single send because June is not recurring. <laughs> um, you can set up recurring ones if you want to, but build campaign. And now it's gonna ask me to select my template, which is easy because there is a June newsletter already in there. Bringing me all kinds of things right here. Tips for downsizing. See, I wasn't, I wasn't kidding. There's a lot of content in here. The newsletters usually show up at the top. So I'm just gonna hit June and it loaded it here and I'm gonna click use this template. Once again, you can go in and edit it where it says edit email. I can edit the subject line, the preview text, whatever I want to do. And now I can schedule this. Let's say that I know I wanted to go out, let's say next Thursday at a certain time of day. I would say nine. Okay, now who's it going to? This is where it gets a little more interesting. Now you need to make sure you're setting up recipient lists, but I'm gonna click add recipients. Now the basic list, this is where I can ask it to search for a certain group of people, high school reunion, or new leads, or just you know certain types of groups or categories. A smart list can be based more on a zip code, um, something more specific in search criteria. Or you know maybe they're first time buyers specifically. If you just want to send it to everyone, that's fine, and it you can send it up to ten thousand as it says here. Or if you have a very specific list that's saved, like newsletter list, and these could be people that have already closed because newsletters can be very informal and not very personal, not very uh, warm. They're going to be a little more you know like I said formal, and you want, don't want to send those to people you're working with right now. So you decide. But either way, I'm gonna go save as a draft and exit. This is something you can do too. You can always go back and work on that. So remember that was our June newsletter and it's down here. So I can go back to it anytime. But recipient list, this is where you need to figure out if you do wanna get specific about certain groups. As you can see here, I've got my golf outing, my networking event. There's some really good videos on Remax University and how to create a recipient list. So I encourage you to watch that. I'm checking to see if there's any questions. Let's jump over to the websites because that's the favorite part of the program. I encourage you too to also check out videos on listing manager as well as seller reports. But let's talk about websites and then we'll start wrapping this up because I know we covered a lot of information. Um, before we get into the websites, I wanna quickly mention how important it is 
to make sure your Max Center profile is updated because that will feed over to remax.com, that will feed over to the referral directory and your websites. Um, all right, so let's see, I got a question that just came in from Bill. Best practices for sharing emails to social media. Bill, I'm, uh, are you specifically talking about getting emails from your social media connections or actually sharing those email templates onto social media? Uh, there's not really a way to grab the HTML content and get them on social media. The only thing I would recommend you do, if that's what you're speaking of, is to do a screenshot. So sharing the email to social or blog. Um, there's not a way to do it. Okay, so you did talk about sharing it. I would do a screenshot if you just want to borrow the images or the look of it, and then maybe add your own links to it. But there's not a way to really um, do a direct social share of the newsletter itself. It, it can have hyperlinks and things in it where you can take people to your social media. So hopefully, Bill, that answers your question. I think it's a really good idea, like where you're going, but right now there's no way to do what's called HTML editing, where you grab the source code and then embed it into another place like social media or website. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to uh, give you bad news, but again, you can borrow some of the content and the images themselves if you want to utilize on social media. Uh, I would also recommend the app called Photofy. I'm just gonna type this in the chat box for everyone right now. The Photofy app, if you haven't looked into it, like I said, especially if you're newer to Remax, uh, let me just type this in. Check out the Photofy app. This is a digital editing photo app. Remax doesn't own it, but we have a partnership with them where um, you get free for 90 days and then $4 a month thereafter full of Remax graphics and already created content for you to post directly to social media. So I will look into Photofy for sure and how to get started with that. Okay. Let's talk about your websites. And we'll start wrapping up here in the next 10 minutes if you can bear with me. I promise you this is gonna be super helpful to you to get started. So this is kind of like lifting the hood of the car. You know you want a website, you know it wants, you want it to look good, you want it to be functional and a good experience, but what goes into the making of it? And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. The first thing you wanna do when you open up the dashboard is you need to go over to the far right and make sure that the publish button is turned on. So if it says publish and it's in blue, I believe, or green, click that button so that it is now published. You wanna make your website live in order to work on it. And what's the worst thing that can happen? You get a lead, right? The best part about this is I'm gonna show you some tips on how to get started with it. And there's lots of videos and webinars and people in the network that can help you with the design of it, including myself. But Ultimately, you want to make you there's already a website created for you. Once you turn it on, there's what's called out of the box content. So that means there's already content there. There's a search bar there. It's ready to go. All you have to do is start promoting it and put it everywhere. So that's simple enough. So if you don't have time right now, but maybe you want this is a good winter project to work on your website, you're okay. There's content there. It looks like a real website. When you hit the publish button, you're gonna have a blue link right here. I'd like you to click that because this is going to show what your website looks like right now with out of the box content. I've done some customization on mine, but you should have some type of a header image and a search bar. If you don't, I'll show you how to change that and get that there. I've got my bio, I've got some reviews, I've got a little bit about my area, social media, and a message or contact box. So really you don't need to overcomplicate the homepage. Do not overcomplicate it. Do not make it too busy. Search bar. So there's really four things. Search, about you, featured listings, and how to get in touch with you. Those are my recommendations for four very basic elements on your homepage. Search, about you, featured listings, and how to get in touch with you. That includes social media as well. Over here to the far right, go ahead and click if you're following along with me, but you actually have a menu again that's built in. And again, I've done some customization, adding school districts and county searches and things like that, but you should have something there, including a home valuation page that you can use to generate some seller leads. Let's go back. Now leave your website open, okay? Leave that tab open. Go back over here by just simply clicking on where it says website dashboard. Just as a quick side note, there's here's one more place. There's three ways. You can share your own version of the Remax search app. Here's another place you can text your link directly on the desktop to someone else. 
So let's say you're talking to a client on the phone, you're working diligently on your laptop and you want to quickly get them that link. Hey, I want to make it easy for you. I know you're looking in a million different places for listings. I'm going to send you a link to my very own search app. You're going to be able to see every listing that's available right here. Save them as favorites, ask me questions, everything will come directly to me, we'll be on the same page. So that's sort of the verbiage that you can use when you're explaining your version of the mobile search app. I want to make it easy for you. People love that. Okay, now, how do you get the layout to look the way it does on the home page? This is when you click change home page. Now you're not changing the content of the page, you're changing overall what it looks like. So the, mine looks a little strange. I promise you, yours looks better. I've done a million different things from training, so it just looks weird right now. But you want to choose the layout that I have chosen is the agent social layout. If you want to have a main header image in the search bar right there underneath it, choose the one that says agent social layout. This is a bad example, sorry. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of things have gone askew on my demo account. But again, agent social layout. This will show you which layout you have. Now I wanna caution you, if you start moving back and forth between different layouts to test them out, it's going to make you start over again with content. So be mindful of that. So like, let's say you go, you choose agent social layout and you start building the content and then you change your mind tomorrow and go back and choose a different layout. It's gonna make you start over again. It's not the worst thing, but it will take you some more time to get it set up again. To get into the content of the homepage, again, we are on website and dashboard. We're gonna click on edit agent social layout. Now I've already done a lot of different things here, so I'm just gonna get rid of these. So I would say remove, if you wanna do exactly what I'm doing here, remove everything that's there except for the header image. And I'll kind of give you an idea what's going on here. All right, so remove everything except the header image. Here's what's really nice. You probably already noticed on the right-hand side, it's going to show you a preview of what you are actually doing on the website. And that works out really good. Okay, let's look at this. Now, again, we just have a header image. Now, how do you get the header image in there? Let's take a look at that. We're gonna go back to like we did in the newsletter block and we're gonna change this image header out. So for instance, a lot of yours might just say home search in Denver and it's a picture of a computer. But let's click the pencil. And then what you do is you actually click the pencil again on this particular block. Some of you might have more than one block showing there because it's a slideshow. So that's up to you. But to get to the images, you can just click on the image with the little click right there. And it's going to pull up once again, all the images in your library. Again, there's a ton of these. So see how it's showing 25 results per page. Watch when I change it to 50. I mean, there's holiday pictures. There's pictures of city. There's pictures of country. There's pictures of covered bridges. And as you can see, landscaping. And let's see what happens when I go to 100 per page. Then hopefully I only have four pages to sort through, but obviously lots of balloon photos. These are stock photos that you have permission to use that Remax Marketing has provided for you and purchased for you and for that purpose. But hey, there's a washer dryer. You might need a picture of a washer dryer. Here's a wedding announcement. Let's see some thank yous and some wine, <laughs> winterizing your home. All right, let's find something here. Let's just go, I don't know. I like the walk-in closet, but let's find the balloon pictures or you can type in the word balloon and let's just pick a different one than the one we already have. Okay, we're gonna hit insert. Okay, there we go. So it looks a little strange the way it is formatted like this, but so not every image is gonna work well for a cover photo. That one's probably better for a newsletter. So we would pick maybe this one. Now looks a little better. All right, we're gonna hit save changes. And the description is really for you. And then we're gonna hit the back arrow. Now let's start adding. Remember search about you is called the bio block. We're gonna find the bio block. I think I passed it, here it is. And it's gonna automatically load this information. As I mentioned before, you must update your, your bio information on your Mac Center profile. And this is going to feed over to remax.com to your bio block and the remax referral directory in the network inside of Max Center for you to get referrals. Where do you find your Max Center profile? You go back to the home page of Max Center, or actually it doesn't have to be the home page. Just go back to Max Center, keep Bouge open, 
go up here to the top right corner where your picture is and then click update profile. Now, if you don't have a picture, that's one of the things you need to fix right away. And I will tell you, usually it's within a half hour or so when you're updating both your website and your Mac Center profile, it could take maybe up to an hour before you see those changes in real time. But let's say you look on here and you go, uh oh, I need to add my photo. So you jump over to photo, go ahead and it should give you the option to upload it. In this case, I'm replacing. It's gonna give you some details here on the size recommendations. And you want it to be a super high resolution because otherwise it'll appear pixelated or grainy. And when consumers are looking at all these agents, there's thousands of them on remax.com. And if they see your picture next to a super high quality one, they may eliminate you thinking that you don't know, you don't pay attention to detail or you just um, don't aren't tech savvy or something, but you don't wanna give people a reason to eliminate you. So make sure it's a super high resolution photo. Okay, professional details, just fill all of this out. Specialties, your service areas where you work, all of that. Because by the way, when you set up the mobile search app, it's going to show a lot of this information about you in even more detail on your profile on the mobile search app. The contact info, very important, of course. This is where, where does your remax.net email forward to? You want to go in and add all of your social media links. And then when you get your website set up and possibly even sign a domain name to it, buy a custom domain on GoDaddy, that's where you're gonna go in and add it right here. So all of these will show up on your block. So please pay attention to that and make sure your profile's up to date. All right, let's go back to Bouge. Let's quickly hit save. And now let's start adding. So we did search about you. Now featured listings will be the six most recent that you have listed. And if you don't have six listings, which is very common right now, I'll show you how to set it up where you can have by default office listings that will be sort of the fallback. And there's more advanced ways to use different search blocks to show properties. Mine won't show up here because it's not really connected to MLS. Uh, but feature listings, again, will show your six most recent or the office's six most recent, and which is probably a better way to go right now the way the market is. The next thing is social. This is where you can set up, it's going, it will have by default Remax content. So it'll have the Remax Facebook stream or the Remax Twitter feed. And then you can turn on all of these others. So let's say if I wanna turn on all the Remax content here, or I can put my very own handles on here. So right now I have this one set up to my own. So to use your own, okay, yours is gonna by default, is gonna look like this. It'll have Remax LLC content, which is, if you're not doing a lot on your business page right now, maybe that's the better route to go, but have some social element on your homepage. Let's say that you are pretty active on your business page, which means updating at least two to three times a week. You wanna uncheck use Remax, paste in your profile. So you copy your whole business page link, hit the blue arrow, and then it's gonna change this over to your page. Do the same thing with Twitter. You can uncheck use Remax on any of these and use your own, which you should. It's your website. Then we're gonna hit save. Finally, just like any business out there, when you wanna get a hold of this company or this person or whoever's running this, this show here, is you wanna have a place to contact them. So a contact box or contact us link is typically found at the bottom of every website. Some, it's found in the menu too, or at the top, but you also wanna give them an option to fill that out. So you're gonna click add block and we're gonna do contact form. So the contact form, can say whatever you want. So it can say questions, contact me today. Or just contact me today or connect with me today. And I'm gonna hit save. So once again, it may take about a half hour or so to update your website in real time from all these changes that you've done. Let's click, let's click exit. I'm gonna show you where those settings are to make sure your office settings show up in featured listings. And let's click on web. So we're gonna go website and website settings. And then let's click on down here below. By the way, you can actually control registration. If, if you feel someone views a certain number of listings that they should be asked to register, that's up to you. 
In this case, it's showing if, if someone looks at 20 listings on my page, it might be a good prospect. I want to try to capture their information. If you leave relaxed, then they're free to browse and free to leave, which I know is what most competitors do, but it's up to you. If you want to give yourself a chance and maybe capture some of that information, you can turn that on. Down here below, additional listings to display. If it says show my listings only, which it probably does, change it to show my listings as well as listings from my office. And then there will be a save button here at the top. Mine's already done. So make sure you save that so then it's set up that way. Because otherwise, if you only have one or two listings, the feature listings block is going to have two listings in the middle and all this white space. And it's going to look like you're not very busy when you really are. <laughs> so that's what it's going to look like. Let's talk about domain names. I would encourage you to search GoDaddy and think of some creative domain names. If your name's already taken, which if you have a common name, it probably is then a lot of it, a lot of agents and brokers get the domain name of their own first and last name. But like I said, if it's taken, then you have to get creative. You have to start looking up searches like movingboston.com. I don't know, it's probably taken. <laughs> but wherever you're located, you got to start thinking like that or selling homes Milwaukee or Milwaukee home sales. You know, just you got to start getting really creative. Just go on GoDaddy and start searching for those dot coms to see if they're available. And then other things you can do is that the navigation is how you get to the menu. Like how do the items display on that menu that we looked at earlier? This gets a little more advanced. And there's, again, there's plenty of training that goes on here between the Remax LLC team and, and us in, at, here at Integra. There's definitely a lot going on in training and getting websites set up. So you can do many different things and drop downs with the menu or the nav and that's under navigation. So when you go here, you're gonna go, where's the menu? It's not under menu, it's under navigation. And then pages, you can set up all kinds of custom pages too. Uh, let me show you a couple of websites that I think are really well done. This one is in Wisconsin, tracythompson.remax.com. She's done a lot more custom things. So this, the way this one's set up, so first of all, you can design custom images in Canva, for instance, like this, like what was done here. So you can design your own images, upload them into the library, and you're good to go. This is what feature listings looks like. And I don't know by looking at this if these are her listings or just her office listings. So yours probably already look way better than mine. This section right here is called the image text block. So you can actually add images with a little header and even hyperlinks underneath. And video, Tracy's really big on video. If you want to add your video story, then I would encourage you to put that on your homepage. It's sort of in a, to meet you, to introduce yourself. Welcome to my website. Here's a little bit about me. And then here's her bio. She just, there's no right or wrong way to do this, whatever works. And even reviews on Zillow and manual testimonials, you decide. And then under the menu here, you should all have this home value estimates page. Let me see if we got some more questions here. Bill says, how can we include the link for our mobile app onto the contact or bio page on the website? Well, all you have to, in any text block, okay, let's go back really quick. There's a couple of options here. So let's look at the different blocks that are available. I'm gonna go back to the home page. You can also do this with inside other pages too. We're gonna to go edit and I'm gonna add a block. There's a couple of them here. I'm just kind of have to play around with them here too. So uh, let's see, where's that one at? The blog. Couple of things. All right, let me do this to make it easier on you. Let's cancel this and I'm just going to go in. Now you could actually put a link in your bio or you can just add a plain text box where you say add block, add block, and it's just text. And you could say something like this, and this is going to be a really quick answer for you, Bill. So uh, download my personal mobile app here. And then you can actually copy and highlight the word here, and you can add a link by simply inserting your mobile link there. 
And there's other ways that can be done too. Uh, there's, there's a lot of videos on Remax University where you can add your own block, you can add images, but that's probably the quickest way you can do it. So let me just, uh, so I'll just leave it like that. I'm just gonna put in a link. Hold on a second. Probably don't. Uh, let me go back here. You just put, I'll just leave it like that. So it will be hyperlinked when you set it up. I'm just gonna hit save. Now you have to figure out where this goes. Now this is just plain text. So if you want this right under your bio block, and if you wanna add an image of the app itself, then you can do, see it's right here. It's just in how this looks right here. Different ways to go about that. The best thing is you can't break your website. <laughs> so the main thing is I would say, turn it on. Uh, but that would be a good way to go. So Bill, hopefully that gives you a general idea. And then there's more advanced ways to do it. I will look on Remax University. In fact, if you go here and just type in Bouge, let's see. There's a lot of different webinars that are being hosted too. There's a whole side link. Let me make this a little bigger. If you go on Remax University, scroll down where it says Bouge, there are many, many videos where uh, dedicated to just the websites, creating certain pages, settings overviews. So the call to action content block is really a good one too, because that, that can have your mobile app in it. And there you go. Okay. All right. Let's wrap it up then. If there's no more questions, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you're having a wonderful summer so far. I wish you the very best with Booge. This was recorded and I'll make sure you get a copy of it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And I appreciate your time.